Hey guys, this is Justin from BreakingTheCRE.com, and in today's video, what we're going to do is explain what a ground lease is and how it's used in commercial real estate investing. So if you're analyzing a commercial real estate deal with a ground lease component and you want to know more about what that ground lease actually is, definitely stick around for this video. Now on this channel, we talk about real estate investing careers and real estate financial modeling. So if you're looking to break into the industry for the first time, or looking to advance your current real estate investing career, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Now a ground lease can be a tricky structure. So you want to make sure that you know exactly what you're getting yourself into before you buy a ground lease deal. So by the end of this video, you'll know what a ground lease is and what to look out for as a real estate investor when you're looking at deals with a ground lease component. So first, let's actually define what a ground lease is. So a ground lease is exactly what it sounds like. It's a lease of land that's generally for a long period of time. So generally what you'll see is leases from 50 all the way up to 99 years in length. And generally on a ground lease, property taxes, insurance, and any other expenses are passed on directly to that lessee that's actually leasing the ground from that landowner. So oftentimes this will happen when an investor or potentially a tenant identifies a piece of land that they want to build on. And they approach that landowner wanting to buy the property, but the landlord for whatever reason doesn't want to sell that piece of property, but they are willing to lease that land to that investor or that tenant. So what ends up happening is that investor or tenant ends up building a structure on that specific property and then we'll pay that landowner a specified amount every month as ground lease payments. Now in that ground lease, these payments are usually going to be predetermined. So you may have annual increases related to CPI or the consumer price index. You may have fixed increases every five or 10 or 15 years, or you may just have a fair market value increase every five or 10 or 15 years based on rental values in that market. Now, as the landowner, this is a great deal because there's no maintenance and no operation that you have to do on that deal. And all you need to do is sit back and collect checks while your tenant does all of the work. That said, you're probably not going to be able to generate the kind of rental revenue that you would if you actually built the improvements yourself and rented each individual suite or apartment unit to a specific tenant directly. Now, another big benefit of being the landowner in this case is at the end of that ground lease, so at the end of the 50, 75, or 99 year term, all of the improvements at that property generally revert back to the landlord. So even though the lessee actually built those improvements on the property, at the end of the ground lease term, generally that landowner is going to take back ownership of everything at that deal. Now, if you're a real estate investor and you're looking at buying a deal with a ground lease component, there are really two main things that you need to look out for. The first is going to be the terms of that ground lease. So what are the annual increases, if any, when do those increases occur and how do those increases actually affect your operating income at the property and how does that affect your cash flow at the deal? Now, number two is what is the remaining term of that ground lease? So if you only have 10 or 15 years left of remaining term of that ground lease, that means that in 10 or 15 years, you run the risk of actually losing your entire investment and having no reversion or sale value when that lease expires. Now, obviously you could end up renegotiating the deal at that time, but oftentimes those landowners have the majority of the leverage in those cases, and it becomes difficult to negotiate a deal that ends up working to create the kind of cash flows you want as a real estate investor. So this is really important when you're going in and buying the property, but also when you're assuming what your sale value is going to be, because if you plan on selling the leasehold interest with only five or 10 years left in that term, that leasehold interest may not be worth very much at the end of your hold period. But at the end of the day, what you really need to know is that a ground lease is when the landowner owns the land and then leases that land to a lessee that can build improvements on the property and operate the property, but is responsible for the operating expenses associated with that deal. So I hope that was helpful. If you want to learn more about the key terms and fundamental things that you need to know to break into commercial real estate investing, I definitely recommend checking out my course, Commercial Real Estate Investing 101. 
that'll go over all the different product types in commercial real estate investing, the key return metrics that you need to know, and even things like JV waterfall structures if you plan on raising capital to buy commercial real estate properties. And if you want access to all of my courses, all of my models, and additional support from me, I'd recommend Break in a CRE Academy, and I'll put a link in the description for Break in a CRE Academy as well. So I hope that was helpful. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this with anyone else who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.